The other day I did a video about Adobe Reader being available on Flight Hub, and I said something completely wrong about a commit that was present in the manifest repo. This is basically the build file for generating the flat pack. If we go to the commits and go down to the very first commit, this is six years before the actual flat pack was made. This is the initial commit by Matthias Klassen and Alexander Larson. And in that commit is nothing. It's just an empty commit. Now, at the time, I thought this might have been reserving the name for Adobe Reader to make sure no one squats on the name. I thought this was a weird one-off event, and I thought this was just generally a really weird commit. Now, I was right about this being a weird commit, because this is a really weird way to do this. I was wrong about the reasoning for the commit, and this being a one-off isolated event, because this is actually tied to how app submissions work over on Flathub. Thank you to Soso -So over on Mastodon for pointing this out. I have been wanting to look into how Flathub app submissions work for a while, and we're not going to go into everything today, but this one peculiar part of it I do want to talk about. So if we go over to Flathub and find some random applications like Obsidian, some random fitness tracker, and an XMPP client, and then go to the manifest repos and go down to the first commit. Initial commit, Matthias Klassen, Alexander Larson. Initial commit, Matthias Klassen, Alexander Larson. Initial commit, Matthias Klassen, and Alexander Larson. If you then go through the list of applications being submitted to Flathub, so if we go to the Flathub organization, go to the Flathub repo, this is where submissions are actually done. If we go to the pull requests, and then go to the close section, things that are marked as ready, those are either available on Flathub, or going to be available very soon, things that are blocked or leave open, there's other reasons why they haven't been merged. Almost Every single one of these flat packs is going to have the exact same commit. Initial commit, Matthias Klassen, Alexander Larson. Now, I don't say every single flat pack because there are some notable exceptions. Also, there was a time where things were done just a little bit differently. Now, you can certainly see all of these pull requests being made to add applications over to Flat Hub, but what is it that you need to do with the pull request? What needs to actually be inside of it? Let's go and have a look at the submission documentation. Now, I'm going to skip over the part where it's like, hey, make sure your manifest works. Make sure you can build your flat pack. Make sure you can install it. All of that fun stuff, because it's not really relevant to what I want to talk about today. Let's instead go down to this part right here. Submission pull request. Flathub submissions are managed through pull requests on GitHub. This should have a giant asterisk next to it or a footnote because most of the time it is and you're probably not going to be able to go down one of the other routes but there is like one or two exceptions that are done a little bit differently and those are relevant to what I want to talk about a bit later. Step one. Fork the Flathub repository on GitHub with the copy the master branch only unchecked. That repository is this one right here, the same repo where applications were being submitted to. Now that might sound like a problem, but you'll see why it's not in just a moment. Step two, clone the fork. Step three, create a new branch for the submission. And step four, Add the required files using git add, commit them, and push them using git commit and git push. These required files are your manifest and other things that are required to actually make the flat pack. And finally, fifth. Now open a pull request against a new PR base branch on GitHub. The title of the PR should be add org.example.myawesomeapp or whatever the name of your application is going to be. Please do not open the PR against the master base branch on the repository. Now, what is this branch right here? If we go over to here, click new PR, there is a single commit. That being initial commit, Matthias Klassen and Alexander Larson, and for some reason, also a random spam comment. However, even though pull requests are being opened, there are thousands of applications available on Flathub 
there is a distinct lack of commits available in the repo. There's only 184 commits here, and if we go to the branches, there's only two branches, there's no additional branches, and there's no tags. So where in the world are the other applications? The answer is not in this repo, but the pull requests are very, very important. Take note of the icon. Every single application you see here is not marked as merged. It is marked as closed. So again, here we have Obsidian. This is available in the FlatHub organization, but it's not in the FlatHub repo. It's in its own dedicated Obsidian repo. And this is done purely for scalability and logistics. You don't want a Flatpak developer to have to download every single other manifest just to be able to go and modify their own. It makes a lot more sense to give them their own dedicated repo that they can modify. Also, managing permissions on individual repos is a lot easier than a mega repo, a mono repo, with every single developer in it. Because how do you make sure that one developer who can make a flat pack can't go and modify someone else's? There are permissions to do that, but it's messy and you don't want to deal with it. But how does that actually work? How does making a pull request on this repository turn into its own dedicated repo? Well, the answer is a bit of ingenuity and a little bit of code. Here is the pull request from an application added back in November. Add org.vertmanager.vertmanager. And the very first thing you'll see after the comments from the author are flat hub bot. A lot of this process has now been automated. Right now what it is doing is queuing up a test build so that other people can actually go and test the application. And that's when you see these comments from actual people like BB Hat. You'll see other people in here as well, sometimes like Hubert Figure and various other people. What the bot is here to do is automate the code stuff. What the people are here to do is make sure the application is actually ready to be put on Flathub. Make sure the application actually works correctly. Make sure the application isn't malware and should never be on Flathub. Make sure permissions are correct. Make sure portals are done correctly. And make sure it actually makes sense to be available on Flathub. Because if it doesn't, well, it shouldn't even get to that stage. And then when a privileged user, a Flathub developer, feels like the flat pack is ready, they will run slash merge. This will tell Flathub bot to do the final step. A repository for the submission has been created at this link right here, and we published a flat hub in four to five hours. You will receive an invite to be a collaborator, which will grant you right access to the above repository. Please accept the invite within one week. Please go through the app maintenance guide if you've never maintained an app on Flathub before. If you're the original developer or an authorized party, please verify your app to let users know it's coming from you. Please follow the Flathub blog for the latest announcements. Thanks. And then it is closed. If we take a look at the pull request being made here, look at the commits. So the very first commit here doesn't actually have the commit from Matthias Klassen. But if we go over to the repository, go to the commits, scroll down to the bottom, right here, Matthias Klassen Alexander Larson. And taking a look at the pull request, this orders the commits in the opposite direction of the commit history, so the oldest commit is at the top. This does not have the commit from Matthias Klassen and Alexander Larson. But if we go over to the new repository that was made, go to the commits, scroll all the way down to the bottom, Matthias Klassen, Alexander Larson, initial commit, 2017. So if the commit wasn't there before, why is it there now? Well, remember what the PR was being opened against, the new PR branch. That branch that only had the single commit, initial commit, Matthias Klassen and Alexander Larson. So this repo has been generated by merging that pull request, but not merging it in the Flathub repo, merging it in a new repository, adding that single commit along with all of the commits being made 
for the new flat pack. And if we look at the Adobe Reader pull request, it is exactly the same. It starts off with the submission, hey, here's what we're doing. And the very first comment here, okay, a little bit after the first comment, the comment here is requesting a build and then testing is done from that, assuming you actually have a build that uh, functions. <laughs> and then towards the bottom here, the merge command is run and a repository is created. Now, in this case, there was someone who was angry because they'd actually made an Adobe Reader pull request earlier, like five years earlier, and they felt like it was unfair that this was being taken from them even though they tried to do it, and whole separate issue. Now, anyone who likes to dig around as much as I do might know of a few notable exceptions. The biggest one being Firefox. Firefox is not hosted on the Flathub repo. If we go to the manifest link, this takes us to somewhere completely different. It takes us to the Mercurial being run by Mozilla. Now, if we go all the way back to the start, you'll see this pull request being made over on GitHub. This isn't the build actually being used for Firefox. Someone tried to make a build before Mozilla wanted it on FlatHub, and at the time they weren't really ready to have a big application like this being built on FlatHub anyway, and this ended up being rejected. Now there is this available on FlatHub, org.mozilla.firefox.baseapp. This is for dependencies needed for Firefox. But when it comes to the actual Firefox application, you won't find it anywhere. So much so that this exists on the repo as well. Where is it located? <laughs> They've got some system in place to make it work. And OBS is another exception. If we go down to the links, go to the manifest, this won't take us to a dedicated repo. It takes us to the OBS Studio repo. Again, this is something you're probably not going to be doing because this is another weird exception being done specifically for OBS. And before being taken over by the developers of OBS, the OBS Flatpak did have its own dedicated repo. The history then did make sense. But ever since the merger, things are just a little bit weird and a little bit funky. But again, you're probably not going to be doing this if you're hosting an application available on FlatHub. 99% of people are going to go down the normal build route. Now, the other exception you'll see is before the FlatHub bot automated the creation of the repo. In that case, things are a little bit odd. So here is one where the initial commit is from Bath the Lion. Here is another one where it's from Adam Ellery. And here's another one where I can't scroll for some reason. I don't know why. Bath the Lion. Okay, here is the pull request for Extreme Tux Racer. If we have a look, there's no bot at all here. Ting Ping is an actual person, even though he might reply like a bot in this case. Actual person here. This was merged by Bath the Lion. <laughs> okay? Now, here's the other one for Mind Test. Once again, no bot at all. Again, merged right here by Bath the Lion. Now, the Adam Ellery one is a little bit different. This was a little bit newer, not from 2017, but from 2019. So, in this case, the FlatHub bot did actually exist. However, it wasn't being used to generate the repo at the end. That was still being done by hand. Now, if we go and have a look at the commits of this, the first commit, Adam Ellery. So in this case, rather than the person who is generating the repo, adding a commit to themselves, the repo is being made based off the commits that are in the pull request. Before the FlatHub bot, things were a little bit wonky and things happened a little bit differently depending on the person who did the merger. Also back at the start you had people opening up pull requests against the master branch. Now 
If we go look at the original version of the submission guidelines, to request FlatHub hosting for an application, submit a pull request against the FlatHub slash request modules for the new PR branch. So, if we go to that repo, which has now been renamed to FlatHub, the new PR branch already existed back then, but some people just didn't follow the rules. <laughs> You know, that also happens. Now things will get even more wonky with the existence of direct application uploads. This has been merged for about a year now. The issue is if we go back to those guidelines, it doesn't actually document that anywhere in here. So, you know, the only cases that use it are OBS with their own dedicated repo and Firefox. I don't know of any others. There might be something, and it technically exists in the infrastructure, but, like, most people are not going through that method. So, look, probably nobody cares about this commit existing, and I am the only one who even realized it was there. But, now I guess you know something about the Flat Hub submission process, even if you didn't really want to know it. So I uh, thank you for sticking around. Anyway, if you like the video, go like the video. And if you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, check out the Patreon, Scribe, Sleep, Bear, Pay link in the description down below. That's going to be it for me and... Upload directly to the other hub.